Hello, welcome to the MuseCore Cafe for today, Wednesday, July 3rd, 2019. And uh, my name is Mark Sabatella. I'm the Director of Education for MuseCore. This is my weekly series of informal chats um, that uh, if you're watching live, you can uh, be participating in the chat uh, here on YouTube. Um, otherwise, you can enjoy the archive. So um, what I usually do is uh, pick a topic uh, either something that seems relevant to current state of what's going on or things that people have asked about or just maybe something I personally have been uh, thinking about. So, uh, and usually it's kind of, uh, you know, what I'm thinking about. Uh, one of the things that I just was uh, doing uh, was uh, converting a uh, score or converting a part from a bass trombone part, actually not even a bass trombone part, um, a trombone part to a Barry sax part. And I figured maybe I would uh, show what that process looks like and talk about some of the other issues involved. So first let me show you what, uh, what I'm dealing with here. Yeah. Okay, so I have a score that um, is... Uh, a piece that we are uh, working on in a, in the Colorado Jazz Workshop uh, big band that I direct, and we uh, we have we have in, in principle we have four trombone players in the band, which is uh, great, uh, but some of the charts are written for five trombones, and this is one that's written for five trombones. So we're not gonna we don't even usually always have all four trombone players present. We certainly don't very often have five, so. Um, and sorry if you can hear hear uh, Claudia out there complaining. It's either Claudia or Gigi, um, the cats. Um, so uh, we don't have five trombone players. So I would love there's a, this piece features the trombone section, and I uh, during the part that's the most important place the saxophones aren't playing. And so what I wanted to do was let the Barry sax um, cover one of the trombone parts. Normally. Uh, this is actually something I've done before. It's the fourth trombone part, the bottom trombone part that uh, I give to the Barry sax. But in this case, um, since we do have a, a, a bass trombone player, at least some of the time, um, I wanted to have one of the in, one of the other trombone parts to give to the Barry sax, so the bass trombone could really play the bass trombone part. But our bass trombone player travels and uh, isn't always able to make the rehearsals, so I wanted to give them both versions. So that's actually what I've done here. It's it's actually just letters B and A and B. Um, well, the beginning A and B, where uh, um, the, uh, the the place is that I was concerned about. So what I did is I went ahead and entered this as a trump as just copying out uh, from the score the uh, third trombone part here, um, going from letter going from the beginning through letter A through B. I went ahead and put in letter C from the I I did this uh, um, also. It's the same as the baritone sax part. But I, I wanted him to not have to change pages with just having an eighth rest there and switch over to its regular part. Because the idea is the Barry Sax player is going to play this part up until uh, this section is over and then he'll switch to his regular part. So I wanted to give him a little more time. So this is actually the place where he's going to make the switch. These notes are just the same. So I wrote out, I copied out both the fifth the third trombone here, but then also I copied out the fifth trombone part because, as I said, often we're missing our uh, bass trombone player, and in that case, I'd, I'd, I'd rather hear the fifth part than the third part. So I copied them both out. Um, when I say copied them both out, I actually used a feature I talked about uh, a week or two ago of uh, the repitch mode. So I did the fifth trombone part first, and all I did then, we enter some more measures here, um, if I I copied and pasted the uh, some measures, and I'll do that here. And then I used the repitch mode, which is under the note input menu, repitch mode, to just change the pitches. Because the third and the fifth trombone part have exactly the same rhythm. So all I have to do is enter the new pitches, and I can just copy them right off the score. 
Um, I'm just making them up here. Uh, but as you can see, it's keeping the original rhythm, it's keeping the articulations, it's keeping the slurs, it's keeping everything. It's just replacing the pitches. So I was able to do that to very quickly convert that fifth trombone part to the third trombone part because they were virtually identical rhythmically. I think the only difference is the fifth trombone had these extra notes there that the third trombone didn't. And I think other than that, the rhythms were um, literally identical. All right, well, let me um, delete those measures because those aren't real. Okay, um, so I've entered this fifth trombone and third trombone music. And I put a page break. I put a, I put a uh, horizontal frame here um, because otherwise some of these measures might be a little too stretched out if they go all the way to the edge of the page. So sometimes I'll put a horizontal frame and then size it appropriately. Also, I know when I change this to Barry Sachs, it's going to transpose and, and it, this actually would have maybe looked okay for the bass trombone, but who knows if it's going to for the very sax. I know it won't because I did this before already. Um, anyhow, that's why there's some frames in here because I want to control how stretched out this last system is. <clears throat> okay, so I have my music entered for trombone and if I want to change the whole thing to baritone sax, all I have to do is right click the staff and say staff part properties and then change instrument. And I'm going to pick a uh, baritone saxophone. And when I do this, it's going to change for me. So you'll see it's changed to treble clef, and the sound is changed. Now, um, there's a very special thing two special things going on here that I should I should point out. One is this music was written without a key signature. Normally if you move if you change from trombone, which is a concert pitch instrument, to baritone sax, uh oh yeah, I I'll change I have to change the name of the part myself. So I'll do that. Um Normally, if you change between uh, a trombone and a baritone sax, they're pitched differently. The baritone sax is a transposing instrument, so you would see a different key signature. But because this music was written with no key signature, none of the instruments have key signatures, um, I used here on the time signatures palette, nope, sorry, not time signatures, key signatures. I use this one with the X, so that um, that says don't use any key signature for no matter what the transposition is. If I press the concert pitch button here, you'll see um, now it's back to bass clef uh, because the baritone sax is set to do that so that it concert pitch, it'll display bass clef because otherwise it'd be crazy ledger lines. Um, but notice the first note here was concert B flat and when I transpose it, it is G. It just so happens also that baritone saxophone and trombone because the transposition works out exactly right, all the notes are on the same lines that they were before, right? At concert pitch, this was a B flat right above the staff. At uh, transposed pitch, it's a G right above the treble clef staff. So if you're a if you're a baritone sax player, you can kind of read this, but you have to fix all these accidentals yourself. You have to realize that B flat. Oh, that's my G, right? Um, not G, not G flat. So it's not. It, it, it kind of works in a pinch, but it, it's not very reliable. So. Um, yeah, there, there we have now my baritone sax has all the right notes. They're transposed as appropriate. The original pitch here was A. And uh, but the transposed pitch is F sharp. So um, this is now ready to give to my baritone sax player. And uh, I plan to print it out and bring it to him for rehearsal tonight so we can play this. And he, depending on whether our bass trombone player is there or not, he can either play the fifth trombone part or the third trombone part. I'll probably run it both ways so uh, um, I can make sure I didn't make any mistakes or anything. Um, so that. That's how you would go about changing a bar uh, like a trombone part into a baritone sax or a flute part into a violin part or whatever other change you want to make. Um, one of the uh, other, I said some related topics that I would talk about. Um, sometimes maybe you don't really want to change the instrument, you just want to change the sound that's played. Like for instance, uh, 
let's say I have a score for, um, let me think about an instrument. Uh, I'm going to use, pick some instruments. Uh, I'll stick with brass and I will pick um, trumpet, I guess. So, hello. Oh, I'm in repitch mode. I have to remember that. When I go to repitch mode, I forget to come back to regular mode, and you cannot enter notes if there's nothing to replace. So, there's trumpet. Um, what if you want the trumpet player to um, uh, put a mute in at this point? And maybe, maybe you're going to have to play this passage again. Well, the way you're going to do that is we're going to go to the text palette, because the way, the way this is notated music is you just put the word mute, or you put consordino if you're doing this uh, in, in a classical context using the Italian terms. In a jazz context, you'd want to tell them what kind of mute. So you'd probably say harmon or cup or whatever. But anyhow, I'll add the text that says mute. And then I'll just edit it to say the kind of mute that I actually want. We'll say Harmon. Uh, the sound will automatically change here. So there you have it. I've um, changed to Harmon mute. If um, you can also tell them maybe to change to a totally different instrument, like we have in our band, um, uh, I have another passage, let me take it down an octave, where I want him to play it on euphonium because, by gosh, he plays euphonium and it would be fun if he switched mid-score to euphonium. So what I can do is go here also on the text palette, change instrument. Um, so if I use the change instrument, now I can change it to read euphonium, or abbreviation there, thereof, and then I can uh, right-click this and say change instrument. And now I can select the euphonium. Now, there's no euphonium listed under common instruments. That's okay. I can type euphonium here and get it there. Um, so uh, now, and euphonium has a different transposition, and it takes care of that for me. So um, there also, so I can I can just go ahead and add that. It doesn't do that automatically. If I'd already had a key change there, it would have transposed it for me. Um, so there's that. It's trumpet, right? And over here, it's harmon muted. Um, so that's how you can change from mute to open in the middle of a thing for violin. That's also how you would change from pizzicato and so forth. There might be other changes that you would want to make that really don't need an instrument change. You really just want to change uh, the sound. Um, so, uh, and I started to talk about that before, like maybe um, there might be more than one trumpet uh sound in this sound font. I don't really know. We'll find out, though. If I go to the mixer, I'm going to press F10. It's also under the view menu. Uh, let me undock this. Um, and I this made the inspector wider. Um, okay, so I can select, you see there's trumpet express and regular trumpet also, trumpet and trumpet expression. This has to do with a single, di single note dynamics feature. And there's the harmon mute. There might be other trumpet sounds also. It looks like not in this sound font. Um, but, you know, maybe I just want to see what it sounds like if I use the whole brass section here. So that's the brass section sound. So you can use the mixer just to change the sound for an instrument. And I can change it for that euphonium also. Like Here's where it shows me what the open trumpet sound is. Here's the muted trumpet sound. There's the euphonium sound. So I could change that euphonium sound. If I decide, you know what, I don't like what that euphonium sounds like, I'd rather just use the tuba 
Well, I think it is using the tuba sound. That's why I don't like it. Um, I could tell it to use, just keep using the trumpet sound, or I could tell it maybe use the trombone sound. That's maybe a little more um, to the point of what I want it to sound like. So now it'll still show the transposition of euphonium. But now it's using a trombone sound. So the, uh, the text palette there is how I added the harmon and open sounds uh, changes. It's also how I added that change instrument. And then I used the change instrument command to actually change the instrument at that point. And I used the mixer to change sounds. So those are the, uh, the things that I wanted to uh, talk about as far as changing instruments. And um, oh, and I showed, of course, the, the original thing I showed was the uh, in staff properties, in staff part properties, the change instrument button there that actually changes the entire part. Um, and you can do that within a score also, right? I mean, if I had a whole score, let me open up one of my scores. Um, and so I have my, it's going to rain. I could say instead of soprano sax, I could change that to some other instrument, flute maybe. Change woodwinds flute. And now instead of soprano sax, you can see it says flute, flute. And uh, the key signature, this one I'm using regular key signature. So you can see the key signature is now um, different than it was when it was soprano sax. It was three sharps before. And the sound is hopefully a flute. So that's, uh, you can do that within the score also. Um, so anyhow, that's uh, some stuff about changing instruments. Sometimes uh, if uh, there's people watching live who have questions or comments, um, I'm happy to answer them. So far, I don't see any uh, questions. So if, uh, if that doesn't change uh, anytime soon, I will probably just sign off and uh, keep this one on, on the shorter side. Um, for these these cafes sometimes we get into longer involved discussions of things mu score 3.2 this week um it, we did release it there, there was just a little glitch that i really want to wait until we we release an update that uh, deals with this little glitch before i um start talking about it at any length um so uh not to worry you can update now and everything's fine but uh um i'll, I'll talk about uh, mu score 3.2 probably more at length next week. There's not that much that's different about it, but there's a, a couple interesting things, and uh, um, and I've just used it as a, a chance to sort of uh, relook at pretty much everything that's uh, changed since we released MuseScore 3, because it's, uh, you know, a lot of little things that have changed. Um, so I think I will sign off now and hope everyone uh, here in the United States has a good holiday weekend. It's uh, 4th of July, the Independence Day tomorrow. Um, so a uh, holiday, uh, holiday week slash weekend for many of us. Um, and uh, hope everyone's having a, a good week, and I will see you next time. Bye.